Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for a very special edition of the show. I'm here with Julian Trimbach of Trimbach Cellars uh, and uh, in Alsace. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be in Burgundy, but I got the time. Why not come up to Alsace and uh, uh, visit uh, visit up here? Um, basically, one of the top producers here in, in Alsace, and this was a, a very, very much a treat. Um, I met uh, Jean over in San Antonio at our SOM meeting a few months ago, and he let us know if we ever were in the area to come up. So I uh, sent an email, and unfortunately, he's in the States. <laughs> Not unfortunately, he's in the States. I get to, I get to hang out with you, so. Um, yeah, so he's in the States, but I get to, get to meet with, with uh, Julian. And just, uh, if you've seen that, that, that little movie about some wine stuff, yes. These are the same people that were in the, one of the one of the parts of the movie um, uh, drinking that 1962 was it? 1962. Yeah, 1962. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, so we're up here, uh, Julian. Uh, let's just get started. Um, tell me about you, and then uh, we can talk talk about the uh, the winery and all that. So mm -hmm. kind of tell me about. Well, I guess kind of growing up here, I guess. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, I grew up here with my two cousins, so we all grew up together here. Uh, with my two cousins, we represent the 13th generation, so small time now. And uh, yes, I grew up here and I used to play here as a kid. As I told you, we used to play hide and seek down in the setup. So With all the single vineyards? <laughs> with all the bottles, single yes. Vineyards, exactly. <laughs> so yes, I... I, I was hanging around here since I'm big like that, you know, Yeah. long, long time ago. So that's why I know everywhere, every, everybody here and that's why everybody, all the people know me here. So right. that's why. Very nice. Um, so let's talk about uh, the, uh, the uh, winery was founded in 1626, mm -hmm. right? And that, where was, what was the city that was in? Uh, as I told you, we start in Rivière, after that we move to Unavir, and after that, for logistic question, we moved to Ribeauvillé. Okay. Uh, because we had a new vineyard and it was more handy to work here in Ribeauvillé. The city was a bit bigger and uh, more easy for the traffic and for everything. Right. And you've been here for how long? Generation. Yeah. Four, four or five generations now. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so yeah, it wasn't just yesterday. Not, not exactly. <laughs> right. Anymore. Very nice. And then uh, you obviously had some vineyards on site. Uh, mm -hmm. We we went up into the vineyards for a little bit. Uh, kind of talk about the uh, the Grand Cru's that you have here. Uh, when in uh, first of all, when in the Alsace, uh, production represents four uh, percent for the Grand Cru. For us, the Freeback family, our Grand Cru production is more than thirty percent. We okay. are nearly at. 40% now, so for us it's really a big, big part of our vineyards is the Grand Cru. And that just because it's the only way to produce great wine is to have great terroir, to produce great grapes, to finally produce great wines. So when we want to purchase some new vineyard, now we are looking only for Grand Cru vineyard or for the best terroir, which are most of the time in close to the Grand Cru vineyards. Okay. Just behind the winery, as I told you, we have two beautiful Grand Cru which is for us one unique single vineyard, one unique plot. Uh, it is that wine, Cuvée Frédéric Emile, and we have Grand Cru Geisberg and Grand Cru Osterberg. And as you uh, saw that, side by side. The two are really side by side, uh, which means with my left hand, I can bin the Grand Cru Geisberg, with my right hand, I can bin the Grand Cru Osterberg. So really side by side. And after that, of course, we also have some beautiful uh, young vines in the Grand Cru Kirchberg. So these are the three Grand Cru in Ribeauvillé. And one of the most important Grand Cru we own is the Grand Cru Rosacaire, where the Clos saint is located. And look, Clos saint is one, is our flagship, is our mm -hmm. top Riesling, dry Riesling, and is located over there, more in the south, in Grand Cru Rosacaire. Okay. So yes, for us, 
we can produce great wine because we have great terroir. That's the most important for us, right. great terroir. Um, and we were talking about uh, the Geisberg and the Osterberg, how the soils are different. That's how they have that dividing line. Can you talk about the, how, how the soils uh, affect the vines? Uh, the soil affect the vine, but just because uh, you have a different personality. In the Grand Geisberg, we have, as I told you, more uh, Grey de Vosges. Grey de Vosges is pinky sandy stone, which gives you a lot of personality in the terroir, which gives you a lot of power in the terroir. Uh, it's a sandstone, so it can get warm during in the hot summer uh, day. So that brings a lot of um, hot personality in the terroir. On the other side, you have Grand Klosterberg, which have more limestone, and uh, that gives you maybe some more fine style, more purity. So both of them uh, balance each other, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And after that, the subsoil is Muschelkalk, and with that beautiful Muschelkalk, we have that beautiful homogeneity in the wine. But after that, Grand Cru Geisberg and Grand Cru Osterberg, for our plot, the main difference between them is the exposition, for sure. Right. Uh, Geisberg is 100% south-facing, looking forward to Colmar. And Grand Cru Osterberg, as the name uh, means, it, it's Osterberg, the mountain which is looking to the east, east so right. to the Germany. Right. Um, which you pointed out, I can see, the, well, there was all the fog, the, the black forest mm -hmm. uh, of Germany over there. Um, and then uh, uh, you had some. Uh, you had the, the younger vineyard. Uh, well, the, it wasn't younger. It's just that you you, you have uh, younger vines uh, in the uh, that that uh, the the third vineyard. Um, and how long they've been there? The you said the vines were around five years right now. More close to ten. Ten. Okay. To ten, uh, seventeen. Um, ten and plus years. Okay. Ten yeah. Ten plus years now. And uh, now. With 10 years old vine, uh, it starts to become really, really interesting because now the roots are really uh, down deep in the soil, so they are less affected by any stress like a lack of water, so like uh, hydric stress. And now that we have roots down in the soil, we have more and more terroir expression, okay. which is really important for us. So that means um, maybe higher density of plantation. So maybe not 5,500, but maybe 6,000 uh, vines per hectare. Okay. And uh, of course, grass on the soil to push the roots to go down, down in the soil. So the first years, it's difficult. So you have to manage uh, with a small vigor. You have to find the balance in the vineyard. But after that, when you can do it, you have deep roots in the soil and that's the best. Okay. So 10 plus years you can start to have great grapes. Very nice. Um, so we'll switch back to some history. Um, so why why the name Frederick Emil? So what was the significance of, of him in the whole 13 generations? Frederick Emil, uh, we, it's the name of the estate, mm -hmm. it's the name of this cuvée, uh, as a tribute to Frederick Emil Trimbach, which is my great, 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 great grandfather, something like that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm not very good in history. But uh, we have him here because right. he did a lot for our family, for our estate. Uh, in 1898, he won the gold medal in the International Brussels Wine Fair. He won the gold medal for his Riesling Grand Reserve. The same wine, the same plot, coming from the same localization of this wine, but he used to call it Riesling Grand Reserve. And he won the gold medal, so he showed the whole world that we can produce great wine, great terroir wine in Alsace, and great dry wine. So as a tribute to him, since 1967, we named this cuvée, Cuvée Frédéric Emile. Okay. So with exactly the same plot, with exactly the same uh, localization of the grapes. So yes, as a tribute to him, the estate and this wine now is Frédéric Emile Trimbach. Very nice. Um... And so you can see his diploma over there. In right. France. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we um, so we, we toured a lot of a lot of the facilities. Um, talk about where um, when you bring the grapes in, you press them. Um, tell me about how how you the production of that when you bring the grapes in for pressing. First of all, each tank we take a look. My uncle, which is the winemaker, which is in charge of all the technical parts here, uh, we check each tank which are coming into our winery. So we take a look of each tank, we take the degrees of each tank, and after that we take the weight of each tank, and after that we press them. Mm -hmm. So we press them, 
uh, and after that, slowly but surely, the juice by gravity are going down into the cellar, so we don't need to pump them, which is very good for us to avoid the oxidation. And after that, uh, we use the centrifugation force, we use the centrifugeuse machine to clean the juice. Because if we don't use that machine, the centrifugation machine, uh, we need a tank, a special tank for that, and 24 hours to wait the sedimentation. Right. And during harvest season, uh, we don't have time and space neither. So the Which I got to see, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and we use the centrifugation force for 60 years now in plus, yeah. and it was pretty good. You have to organize your well, but after that it's worked pretty good. And so that's, uh, with that technique we can spare time and space, which is the key. Okay. And uh, so you've got a combination of uh, concrete, stainless steel, and oak as far as um, for fermentation and all that and production. Mm -hmm. um, kind of talk to me about how how that all works and the, the, the lack of difference, really. Mm -hmm. Well, for us, it's just a question of logistic. Mm -hmm. As I told you, if we need uh, 41 hectoliters, 41 hectoliters, it will be the F15. F15, which means food, food, big oak barrels. Mm -hmm. So it will be the F15. And if we need something else, it will be an inox tank, a stainless steel, or a Simons. So it's just a question of logistic. For us, there is no distinction, there is no difference between inox, oak, or cement. Mm -hmm. uh, the only small difference we sometimes have is the reduction in the stainless steel after the alcoholic fermentation. But that reduction after the alcoholic fermentation, when we take out the lees, uh, that puts some air in the wine, we transfer the wine into another tank, so that puts, once again, Get air your, in yeah. the wine. And so if you put air in a wine which have some reduction, the reduction just disappears automatically. Okay. So that's the only small difference we have, and after that, for us, there is no no distinction. Um, we didn't talk about it, but because I for some reason I didn't ask you about the lees. How long do you have like a, a, a kind of a general uh, general length of time that you leave any of the wines on lees, or is it just it's just after fermentation? It's there's there, nothing. No, no, that, it's there is no rules. In fact, there is no there is no receipt. There is no uh, three days after the fermentation rework over. No, it's just by tasting, mm -hmm. by experience. My uh, uncle, my grandfather, they did that for right. I don't know how many years, but <laughs> a lot of years. And so, just by experience, they know when they we have to take out the leaves, when we have to rework over. We taste the wine, and mm -hmm. when we start to smell the leaves, uh, the reduction, we rework over. We take out the wine, and we put it in another tank, and that. The wine will sediment another time, so we, there is always lees, mm -hmm. but more fine, more elegant lees. Okay. And that's the that's the idea. It's to put the wine with lees, but with more elegant and more fine lees. Okay. And that's only the the decision of my uncle Pierre. Okay. And uh, you showed me those barrels, and you've got a barrel that's as old as what 1717. Mm -hmm. um, and all different sizes. I mean, these these. So just so we. So that I'm explaining uh, what's going on here with the with these oak barrels um, and why why there really isn't a big deal because these barrels are so old they're really not doing anything. I mean, this is not like you you know a one year old or you know two even a two year old like barrique that's going to do anything to to the wine. Matter of fact, like, there's a sign over here it says "Say no, say no to oak. Help put the fruit back in the wine." Yeah. yeah. So I mean. There's no oak aging going on here. It's, it's, no. it's really bottle aging, right? Bottle aging for sure. And no oak aging because we have really um, beautiful and aromatic grape varieties. Mm -hmm. We have strong and great personality terroir. So we don't want to add anything else in our wines. We have enough uh, of aromas, enough of personality in our wines. We mm -hmm. don't want to add anything else. No makeup. We right. don't have anything to hide. So it's only the fruit, the fruit, and the fruit, and more than anything, the terroir which is speaking. For example, uh, for example, from the classic cuvee to the top level, to the close tune, uh, the winemaking process is 100% the same. We don't add anything else, there is no gauging, so the winemaking process is 100% the same, which means the only difference you're going to have is the terroir and old vine or young vine. Okay. That's the only difference. So where, that's where the magic of terroir appears. 
is when you are testing a Frederick Emil or when you are testing a Klaus and June, mm -hmm. the only difference you have is the terroir expression. Right. And that's it. After that, uh, we have big hawk barrels. As I told you, we call them foudre. Those big foudre are more than 200 years old. Uh, two months ago, I asked my grandfather uh, for how many times we have those barrels. And he just told me, I don't know. <laughs> before me and before my father. Right. So we don't know, but they are here and they are old enough to not impact the wine with any oak sensation. Right. They are big enough for that too, so they are perfect. It asks you a lot of time to wash them. Yes. I can tell you that. Wait, did you do personally, right? Because I do it personally and all of them, it's me who award them. So yes, it asks you a lot of time to, to keep them clean and in a good health, if I could say. But they are doing a pretty good job, so of yeah. course we don't remove them. Matter of fact, you, you, when we finish, you got to go back to clean something, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank, you thank you for reminding me. Yeah, that, sorry, but. I didn't mean. I'm not trying to rush you. <laughs> um, uh, we kind of. I forgot to talk about this with, or ask you to talk about this with, with the vineyards, because um, I'd asked you about uh, organic and biodynamic farming, and so kind of talk to me about um, how how you how you farm mm -hmm. uh, the vineyards. We don't have any certification. We mm -hmm. don't look for any certification for the moment. Uh, I told you we spray our vineyards during the green season mm -hmm. against uh, fungus, so against uh, odium and mildew. Uh, we spray our vineyards since seven to eight years, maybe now, uh, in the organic way. So it's only in organic way, no uh, chemical, no systemic, no penetrant products, only contact products. Okay. Uh, and we use uh, the bouillie bordelaise, so culper and sulfur, nothing okay. else. Uh, after that, there is the Clausentuin, which is in organic, completely in organic pollution for six years now and even more, and with some biodynamic process. But once again, we are not looking for the certification because, on one hand, uh, we there is plot steep slope plot where we use um, this this urban. Uh, on just behind the wrong small, small space, but we're still using that. And uh, in the other hand, because we are also purchasing some grapes and to, to, to produce that we know for generation now, but they are not in organic production. Right. They are in sustainable production for sure. If not, we don't buy grapes, mm -hmm. uh, but they are not in the organic production. So it's difficult to be in organic production when you purchase some grapes. Right. Because down in the cellar, uh, you have to separate them. You have to have one cellar for the organic production and one cellar for the sustainable production. So that's really, right. really hard. But we know as the Trima family, we know that we spraying our wine, our vineyard in uh, organic production and that we are working more and more and more in the organic way. Just because it makes sense, just because we work for the next generation and just because we respect more the nature. We don't want to destroy what we have, that treasure that we have in right. our hand, uh, the great terroir, the great uh, vineyard. So we don't, don't want to destroy that. So that just because it makes sense, we are going more and more in the organic way. One day, maybe we're gonna ask for the certification, uh, but I think it will be for commercial region. Mm -hmm. And for the moment, we don't need that for commercial region, so we don't really care about that. Uh, but yes, maybe one day we're gonna ask that for commercial region, and that's not the good way to, to do it. Right. We do it for us. We do it for the next generation, as I said, and that's it. And you said that uh, Alsace, is, is it, as an area, mm -hmm. is very much going in that direction, yeah. right? Hopefully, so one of the yes. first one of the first areas here. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Yes. Well, and, and as I've talked to many winemakers and far, grape farmers, um, you know, it seems that it, 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 that's more of a trend internationally. Is that uh, go into that type of um, the type of uh, farming of grapes so that you're not you're not harming the land and harming the, you know harming the grapes with with the chemicals that you don't need in there um, and that just seems to be what's happening more and more now I don't know what the really really big producers you know of, of bulk wine are doing mm -hmm. that they, they kind of probably have to do what they do but for places like you guys it seems to be that's the the what makes sense is to is to farm that way. We are going in that way. Yeah, yeah. that's for sure. Um, all the searching generation, we want to go in that way, and it just makes sense for us. We don't. We want to eat healthy. We want mm -hmm. to 
uh, drink healthy because we cannot breathe healthy for the moment. So if we can eat and drink healthy, why yeah. Not? Um, and then we were also talking about. I mean, today's a gorgeous day, mm -hmm. and you've got what today and maybe tomorrow finish up your harvest, and this is going to be your late harvest stuff, right? Yeah, not going wood, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, we were talking about how um, over the years with global warming that you tend to have a little more extremes with your with your yeah. with your vintages. It's really hard to say how global warming affects us. There is okay. one thing which is true: it affects us. And as I told you, yes, it's not. Uh, oh, it's getting warmer and warmer and warmer. The the fact is, when it's getting warmer, it's really getting really really warmer, really right? Dry and warm, and. When, on the other side, when it's getting wet and when there is rain, it's really rainy and it's really wet. Uh, if you want, we have 2015 vintage, which was really, really dry. Yes. When I mean really dry, it's really, really dry. And on the contrary, 2016 was really, really wet. So you cannot say, yes, it's getting warmer and warmer. No, it's just getting extreme like that and extreme like that. So it's getting difficult to manage that, but mm -hmm. when it's one other challenge that Mother Nature is giving us and we get to deal with that. We get to find the balance in the vineyard and right. to respect that and try to get it more constantly. Okay. And then um, with, with that, um, talking about just weather in general, because um, I, I mentioned the fact that last week I was checking the weather, I was looking to see how, how, many, how much rain was going to come. And last week when I looked, it looked like it was going to rain today. And he made a comment to myself and I told you that it never rains in Alsace, um, which is not true, but it does rain here. But um, kind of talk about how uh, the Vosges, right? Did I say it right? Exactly. All right. The Vosges, the Vosges Mountains affect your the rainfall here. Yeah. Well, we are one of the driest, if not the driest region in France, thanks to the Vosges Mountain. Mm -hmm. Because all the rain which are coming from the... Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. are stopped by the red, the, the Vosges Mountain, like the Andes Mountain uh, protect the Mendoza region in Argentina. Right. We are it's the same effect here. We are protected by that effect. Uh, the Vosges Mountain gives us that beautiful weather. You can see it. Sorry, but we can see it. Yeah. Beautiful, <laughs> yeah. beautiful Indian summer we have today, and uh, that's allow us to be and to go in organic culture because mm -hmm. it's not too humid. So to fight the fungus, to right. fight the mildew and the ozone, it helps us a lot. It helps us a lot to have great maturity, to have great uh, alcohol potential. So that's really, really important for us too. And after that, a beautiful uh, MPS, well, a beautiful city to live in. It's yeah. Great weather. Let me All tell you, long. yeah. Um, you know, this is my second time in Europe, or second time in France, um, and just, uh, and where I live, I mean, not that there's no history in Texas or in San Antonio, there is, but we're you know, not we're not surrounded by it. Like you know, the most of the construction, most of the buildings, in, in where I live is is within the last 50 years, if not newer. Um, but to to drive all through France, I mean, I drove from Bone all the way up here, so I had a three hour ish, about three hour drive, mm -hmm. and a lot of it was in the dark because I left I left Bone at like. Just before seven o'clock, mm -hmm. so it was exactly. sunrise was like yeah. eight o'clock or something like that. So, um, but just the the scenery. Once I got closer and closer to Alsace and seeing all the mountains coming around and some fog and everything, you know, just excellent, beautiful scenery and just the history um, is just it's amazing to to see this and, and it's all you know. about history. <laughs> yeah, everywhere you look, it's all about history. Here. Yeah. I mean, have you told me about the the castle on the on the top of the mountain? Mm -hmm. um, there's what three there's three in town. Three castles. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, because I, I could see it driving up. I was, I was like, I wonder what that is. Um, so we, we went, so we went through the vineyards. We we also went to the cellar. Um, so uh, the first part of the cellar, you have uh, some of the older mm -hmm. older wines there. Kind of tell me about tell tell us about that. On the old private collection. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it's an old private collection where. Uh, for the best cuvée, so for all the Grand Cru vineyard, uh, for all the best cuvée we have, we try to put some bottle aside. After that, I told you also for the best vintages, we try to put bottle aside, even if it's not the best cuvée. Mm -hmm. So that's why we still have, uh, for example, Pinot 76, Sylvaner 76, which are tasting, still tasting very, very good now. Right, yeah. Um, 2016, last year, so yes, last year we taste uh, Pinot and Sylvaner 76. 
for my uncle's birthday and it was just incredible. Right. Really, really good. We shared with all the vineyard team and all the, the team which are working with us. And it was a great, great moment. And after that, we don't have a lot of uh, old, old bottle because when my grandfather took over the winery, he was only 22 years old. It was after World War II. It was in the same time of Algeria war. So at mm -hmm. that time, he was not thinking about, oh, I will put bottle aside. Right. He was just... Needed money. Work, 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 <laughs> yeah. Money, in fact. So yes, it's only in the early 80s when my father, when my uncle came uh, into the winery, worked with my grandfather, that they start together to put some bottle aside and more and more bottle aside. Now, hopefully, we can allow us to put more and more bottle mm -hmm. aside. But in the past, it was not like that. We are very lucky today to to have that uh, that context and that peace context. So hopefully, right. yes, we can. We are and we still we're still in peace now. Once again, not a nude. But uh, yes, we have a, our private collection where we can uh, keep some bottle, and so the next generation can taste right. what we are producing today and what my grandfather did, what my uncle did. So, which is quite incredible. Yeah. When I told you I taste the 1962 in the Clos Saint-Jean Vineyard, uh, I feel amazing for that because I was with my father. We were in the heart of the Clos Saint-Jean Vineyard and beside of it. And most of all, I don't think there is a lot of people on earth who can say, I taste my grandfather work. Yeah, and that's, exactly. <laughs> that's the most important for me. I taste what my grandfather did and it was just a great, great experience for me. Closest I can say is that, you know, I. I lived as a very, very small infant and, of course, visited several times uh, the house my grandfather did did build in New Jersey, mm -hmm. but uh, um, he was a stone worker. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's about the closest I could say. <laughs> Looking for you. Yeah. Um, uh, was that the... Was that the um, was that, was that the first time you'd had the 62 or had you had it previously? The first and the only time. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, 1962, it's a really rare vintage. It's yeah. a good vintage in Alsace. Maybe not the best one, but a good vintage in Alsace. Yeah. And uh, we don't open that kind of water every day. No. Sure. <laughs> one time a year and even that. No, no, it was the only time yeah. and the first time for sure, yeah. Yeah. You said your dad called you up and said you want to taste this and you're on Facebook, right? <laughs> Yeah, but that's a true story. I was working with my grandfather in the expedition sector, and he just gave me a call. Julien, we're about to open a close entry in 1962 in the close entry Would you like to come? So, of course, yes. I, yeah, of course, right? I Absolutely. Ran the past, uh, I went to the, the plot as far as I can. Yeah. It was a great um, experience. So, uh, we also, we also, you also showed me basically where you, you do hold your bottles. So, kind of mm -hmm. tell me about how you're your aging process in the bottle, what, what, what will you do with that? Well, for the best cuvee, for the terroir wine, uh, we bottle the wine in the spring, mm -hmm. after, the, after the, the vintage, we bottle the wine until next year, uh, uh, during the spring, as fast as we can, because we want to avoid the, the, the warmer temperature. Okay. The warm temperature, because with warm temperature, you can have some problem in the bottle, re-fermentation or things like that. Right. So we want to bottle them earlier. Uh, if you bottle them earlier, you also have that freshness sensation in the wine that mm -hmm. we try to keep. Uh, after that, uh, yes, for the best cuvee, we age them as long as they need. So right. There, once again, there is no rules. It's only when the wine is ready. So it's something like five to six and plus years, really depending. I told you, really depending on the wine is ready. So this is Frédéric Emile 08, 2008. Uh, it's almost finished now, but we put it on the market a year ago. Yeah. Even it's 08, even if it was just eight years of aging, but just because the wine needed it. Uh, we released 09 before, but just because 09 was really open, charming and beautiful. 08 was strict, really shy, Great potential, mm -hmm. really, really shy. So we just wait for the wine. Uh, I was recently, recently there was a, uh, another group, uh, Champagne uh, Krug actually met with our group too. Mm -hmm. uh, recently they talked about the same thing, how they released a newer vintage because it was ready. The older vintage of, of uh, or sort of their Grand Cuvée, it's not really vintage. Mm -hmm. Their Grand Cuvée, well, not sorry, the vintage. They had an older vintage that wasn't ready, so they held it back mm. for a little bit longer, but they released a newer one. Mm. Um, so same idea. If it's not ready, 
you're it, not going to release it. If it's not ready. Yeah. It's only by tasting. We taste all the family together. My grandfather is 86 years old now. Mm -hmm. Still working every day. Still at the winery at 6 every morning. Yeah. Just because he drinks that wasn't a lot of him. That wasn't him in the vineyard, right? That we saw. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. But he is something somewhere in the office. Of him. He's, yeah. He is working. Right. Just, yeah. Just because he drink a lot of dry whistling. That's yeah. The secret to keep your life. If there you, you go. Know. So uh, all together we taste the wine, and generally we are all in the same way. And yes, if the wine is ready, it's ready. If yeah. not, we wait more. And how many bottles did you have down there? Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> Okay. You had a lot of bottles down there. A lot of bottles, yes, because we aged them for a long time and because uh, yeah. Yeah, for that reason, yes, we have uh, a lot of bottles down in the cellar. Hopefully, right. yeah. Very nice. Matter of fact, you actually had to, you've had, your, all your expansion has really been underground too. Mm. Yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty amazing to see uh, newer parts of your cellar uh, and production facilities that or just underneath because you have nowhere else to build like it's not like you can you're not gonna you're not gonna rip vineyards out <laughs> uh, we did it for the new cellar and yeah. it was a uh, heartbreaking so now we yeah. know it's gonna be we have to to deal with that we got to organize in other way because yes now we cannot push the wall so yeah but yeah. we don't want to get bigger and bigger and bigger it's not the the aim it's not the right. objective uh, at all we just want to be sustainable to keep producing quality wine, terroir wine, high quality gastronomic wine, and that's it. Um, and, and one of the things you talked about, like why you keep the, the bottles for, for so long, because you, you said terroir just, re just now, remind me, that's it's really because while you could release the wines pretty early and they'd be good, they, they would wouldn't, good. They really they're not going to express the terroir, right? Exactly. Uh, in fact, this thing is for me, uh, the best grape to reflect the terroir. It's all about elegance, it's all about purity, so it mm -hmm. reflects really, really well the terroir. Um, that kind of wine, if you release it earlier, the wine will be good, it will be fruity, great acidity. Okay, but you miss the most important, you miss the terroir expression. Right. You will not have the limestone expression, you will not have the Michel Calc expression, so you will miss, for me, everything. We try to produce terroir wine with that kind of wine. We produce terroir wine with that kind of wine. And that's what we want to smell, to feel, and to, to find in the wine. So right. it's not make sense for us to put the wine in the market before that. Because unfortunately, we know that now when the, wa the wine are bought, they are drink in the same day or maybe in the same week. There is less and less people who age the wine down in the cellar because most of the time they don't have cellar right. and they don't have the opportunity or the facility to age them. So we try to age them for them, for our customer. We try to age them for our customer. We try to propose them wine which are aged and good to drink when they are good to drink. Very nice. Um, and then we are in your tasting room. so. Um, is this something where someone can just pop in or do they need to make an appointment to do a tasting? If you want to have a good tasting, it's better to have an appointment, but uh, of course it's open. Mm -hmm. In Alsace, most of the time it's like that. It's open and free tasting. Right. So if you can, you can come and ask for tasting some wine. Not all. Not all, all but wine, yeah. <laughs> of course, but... I uh, want one of each. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. And even, you, even if you want to buy some wines like right. the Grand Cru Schlossberg, the Grand Cru Geisberg, you cannot buy those kind of wine here because the quantity are too small. So it's only, it's too rare. To, right, to yeah. But, uh, They've been allocated elsewhere. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, matter of fact, before we were, while we were setting up, we had, we had uh, some people here doing that, doing mm -hmm. just that, uh, mm -hmm. doing some tasting, thinking, I think the gentleman purchased the bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is, this is a beautiful beautiful facility um beautiful vineyards it's uh the town is incredible um mm. you know it's it was uh it, it to, for me this is just like it's a great experience just to be able to come up here and and uh see uh the vineyards and see the winery and just the the area and you know my my purpose here is to the best way to learn about a place is to visit a place, you know, because you can see the lay of the land and, and understand. See, smell, feel, yeah. everything. You're wearing the cellar, you smell the fermentation, you right, smell yeah. the fruits. It's the best way to understand, yeah. I love the smell of a winery. <laughs>
I don't really like I don't like smells of breweries. I don't know why. Fermenting beer is just not the same as fermenting wine. But no, I like what beer. I like what it becomes. I like you know. I like beer too. <laughs> we all, yeah. What do we drink at the end of the day? Well, I don't know about you, but I drink beer at the end of the day. Uh, well, um, Julian, I think we've kind of covered everything. Is there anything you want to that I might have missed that we talked about during our tour? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think I said everything about yeah. me, about the family, or we can, as I, as I told you, uh, talking about our patient, it could be one hour, two hour a week. Yeah. We could still be talking about a week, but uh, we need to taste some more wines and people will not taste the wine. So it's maybe better to taste together without the camera and yeah. finish like that. That'd be awesome. Perfect. Well, um, we're going to wrap this up then. We're going we're gonna to try some stuff here. And uh, Julian, I just want to appreciate you coming or, or, or letting me uh, visit with you. Um, it's, it's an honor to, to come here no, and, um, and be able to hang out and, uh, and do all this. Uh, folks, this is, uh, this is the first of seven total uh, interview appointments that I have. Um, the rest will be in the, the rest of Burgundy area. Um, but uh, you'll see these for the next seven weeks or whatever, however many, however many weeks it is. So we got Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year, so they'll be delayed there and in, in, in all that too. But um, so uh, this is going to be a fun trip for me and already is fun. Um, but make sure you uh, tune in for all the other stuff. Um, I'll include links uh, below for uh, Trimbach. Uh, if you are going to visit, let them know. Uh, come on by and check it out. Um, the, the wines are amazing. You know, pick them up off the shelf, whether it's, you know, the, I don't want to say the lowest, but your <laughs> the, um, the reg entry level. Yes. I don't like using cheap or low because that's no. not really a good way to say entry level is a great way, you know, the all the wines. way to the close a noon. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, anything, uh, they, they make great stuff because, uh, when your father visited us, uh, we had nice little range of stuff that we, that we tasted. It was really great stuff. That's really important for us from the classic range for yeah. the entry level to the top we try to have the same wine quality the same top quality dry wine dry right. wine or dry wine so we try to have that and pure right and that's it yeah so that's how we love the wine that's how my uncle Pierre Trimbach is doing the wine and in fact the wine are reflecting the winemaker so my uncle is really right like that and the wine are in the same way so very that's good. why we love yeah very nice well, that's going to do it uh, for this episode. Um, as always, uh, click the links above to friend me up. Uh, click the link bo below for information. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>